Hi, I'm Zena Awesome. So I would like to tell you a little bit about a Black Friday special for a class about nutrition that I'm going to be offering. It's going to be marked down 90%. Its regular price is $4.99. It's going to be marked down to $49. And what's so great about this class is you hear so much about nutrition and education, uh, you know, eat this, eat this. You see lists of the top 10, the top 20 best foods to eat to prevent cancer, prevent Alzheimer's, or you hear a lot of what you should do, but you don't hear a lot about how to do it. So this class is going to fill some of the gaps on the how-to. So it's going to kind of be an hands-on class. There'll be a little bit of education about certain things, but the focus is on how to get it done and actually getting it done during the class. The goal of the class is for you to have picked up six, six, no, it's six weeks. The plan is for you to have picked up three new healthier habits. So the focus is on creating habits around food and strategies to eat better, to make better choices, shortcuts, to overcome some of the objections of why you can't eat certain things because it takes too much to cook or it takes too much planning or it takes there's a lot of excuses we use as to why we can't eat healthier and I'm going to be providing you with tips and tricks and tools to overcome those problems so that you can indeed eat healthier now Eating healthier does not necessarily mean you're going to lose weight. It, it's, it's, this is not dieting. This is picking foods that give your body better nutrition. And by that I mean moving away from processed foods because processed foods have so many chemicals and additives to them that it's just not what we were our body, you know, through evolution, what our bodies were raised for. Let me give you an example. This was something I found really surprising is that, you know, for centuries, actually for, for millennia, um, humans have lived off of bread. If you have water and you have wheat, if you just try to eat the flour, you can't live off of that. But if you mix the two together, and then the microbes get in there and cause it to ferment and rise, you can actually live off of bread. So separate will not sustain life for a long time. Together it will. So bread is an absolute amazing food. But what happened is in the 1940s, we started mass producing food, one of them being bread. So they had to discover or find a yeast that rapidly expanded the bread to, you know, cause the yeast is, um, releases the, the gases to cause the air bubbles to cause it to puff up. And they found the beer yeast. So yes, if you've ever used like yeast to make bread or something, you can kind of smell that it has that beer scent to it. They used a yeast that was found in beer and they started making all the bread that way. But that's not what people a hundred years ago ate for bread. It's not, you know, it's, it's different because business needed to make a manufacturing process that was fast and efficient. So they picked a yeast that was fast and efficient. Now the downside to that is that since it's fast, the yeast doesn't have as long to break down the molecules to make the food more nutritious. And then of course, on top of that, they used white flour, and then the way business works is they find a problem. They found that white bread wasn't very nutritious. So what do they do? They solve the problem by adding nutrients. So basically they take something that's 
not nutrient dense and they say oh it's a problem so let's just take some chemicals some vitamins and minerals and we'll throw them back in the process and that'll take care of the stuff that we've taken out well in theory that works but our bodies do everything on a molecular level so when you don't have the same molecule it doesn't always work exactly the same and then on top of that when you talk about bread of course is now we have the the genetically modified organism you know gmo bread, um, where the um, flour the wheat has been modified to handle pesticides and other things um, pesticides because a lot of the pesticides and herbicides would be bad for the plant, so they made the plant uh, more immune to that. An example of that would be Roundup, um, which of course um, is even outlawed in some countries, which has chemicals in it which aren't good for you. So some of the GMO products could be made to be more tolerant to that which means then they could actually have some of that in them because that doesn't kill them. So that's, that's where you can get into non-GMO issues. Because I know for me, I'd always kind of felt, well, you know, we always genetically modified our foods. We just it took longer by actually breeding two plants together for a certain result. But now they're trying to do things to make it resistant to stuff and when you start really getting things complicated you can be um, breeding out some of the nutrition and other things that have been in certain plants for a long time so when i'm talking healthier i'm talking about going back to more natural foods and preferably organic but organic isn't required um, one of my things I've found that in shifting to organic foods is a lot of the organic foods have a lot better flavor. So not only are you getting um, a healthier product, you're also getting a product that, that actually tastes better. That was a big surprise for me because I really didn't expect there to be any difference. But I have found that there is a difference. So when I'm talking healthy, I'm talking about adding fruits, vegetables, natural grains, and variety into your diet to to give your body the different nutrients it needs and there's a lot of studies that show a lot of different things that are good to add to your diet for example mushrooms and maybe you don't like mushrooms but there's ways to incorporate certain foods in where it, you don't really taste them anyway my hubby didn't like mushrooms and yet I found as long as I chopped him up small enough, he actually didn't dislike mushrooms. He disliked the texture of mushrooms, which I think is a really common problem because mushrooms kind of have what some people would feel like a slimy, a slimy feeling. You know, we are actually very sensitive in our mouths to the mouth feel like a lot of children don't like pears because pears have a, a grainy feeling to them. So um my goal with the class is to give you tools on how to take these more natural foods and move away from the more processed foods but do it in an easy simple manner that it's not going to drive you crazy so if this is something that you're interested in please comment below and uh, stay tuned and i'll let you know more about this